So guys, today we're going to dive into the intriguing world of backclicking. You've probably felt it before, perhaps someone's done it to you, that sense of relief when your back pops or clicks. But what is actually happening when that click occurs? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So, what happens when your back clicks? Is it just a harmless sound or is there something deeper happening below the surface? Either way, I know that on social media there is massive speculation about what happens and whether or not it actually creates a real effect. So whether you're a healthcare professional or just someone curious about what happens in your back, hopefully this video will clear up some of the science around it. So let's start with you guys, the viewers, the general population. We've got this brilliant study from Dumoulin et al who explored what do patients actually think is happening when they hear that click. So 72% of participants thought that this clicking and cracking was a sign of realignment within the spine, the vertebra returning to their normal position or rubbing against each other. 40% of participants felt that the click was the sign that showed that the manipulation Population had been successful. So basically, very physical changes is what the normal population thinks is happening when that click occurs. So that might be what a patient thinks happening, but we've got this other brilliant study by Kauchak et al. in which they looked at joint manipulation under an MRI scan. Now, when they did so, they deemed that this process of clicking was due to, and I'll read it to you, Joint cracking is the result of cavity inception within synovial fluid caused by changes in pressure, deemed as a known process called tribonucleation. Of course, obviously. No, but seriously, what on earth does that mean? So if we simplify this, it basically means when little small gas bubbles within our synovial fluid pop or collapse when there is sufficient pressure put on that fluid. Now this normally happens when the range of movement within our back goes beyond its normal range. Now that could be when we either twist or move in a certain direction or when there's a manipulation that puts pressure on the back like we might have with a manipulation maneuver. But I suppose that highlights our first real point. The general population or patients may think that the click is due to this major mechanical move, a real realignment of the spine. Whereas actually under an MRI, it suggests that it's just a small pop of a gas bubble. So it's no surprise that patients think that they need to have their back clicked in order to realign things when actually it's just a really small thing occurring when it does. So back to this study from Kauchak et al, where they looked at this joint manipulation under an MRI scan. Now, admittedly, this study is based on the metacarpophalangeal joints of the hand rather than the spine. However, it does actually help us prove a point. The researchers found that whilst movement occurred locally at the joint, there wasn't any massive significant movement, nothing really realigned. And therefore, if we've got a joint like the metacarpophalangeal joint, which we can see on the anatomy here, is quite an open joint. There's not a huge amount of bony congruency, almost blocking movement. And if we compare that to the spine, a vertebral alignment where there is loads of bony contact and loads of stability there, how is it the case that we can genuinely say we can realign structures in the back with this clicking when it didn't even occur with these small joints which are more open? Think about just how much you would have to do in order to realign those spinal vertebra when they're actually so solid and stable in the first place. Okay, so now we know a little bit more about what actually happens in the body when the click occurs. The next question is, do we have to be really specific to the structure we're targeting when doing these manipulations? And the answer is no. Nimital actually found that we don't have to apply the manipulation to a specific structure in order for it to be effective. So in other words, we can apply a manipulation here and still get an effect over here. So why is this relevant? Well, I suppose it means that if the clicking or the tribonucleation doesn't have to occur at the very specific joint that we're targeting, does it actually support this concept that that clicking is what creates that pain relief or creates that realignment of the spine? Perhaps not. Perhaps the evidence doesn't truly support that we should do these manipulations to realign the spine. But does that mean 
that we're not allowed to use manipulation at all. So we do know from a systematic review from Wout et al that even if we don't have to target a specific structure, manual therapy can still have some local pain pressure relief. And therefore I suppose it means that you commonly hear about this window of opportunity that manual therapy can perhaps allow a patient to move a little bit more easily immediately after having such a manipulation. But at least explaining it that way is a little bit more positive than some of the absolute nonsense that we sometimes see on social media that almost promotes this idea that patients have a fragile back and they need to have their back realigned regularly in order to be out of pain. And of course, this is a major hindrance for patients. It makes them believe that they can't move in certain directions or they have to stay in a very rigid posture in order to keep their back in alignment. And it's this misinformation that really causes harm for our patients and their thinking. So therefore, the bottom line, this clicking is a really small microscopic process of bubbles popping within our joints. The clicking does not occur because our back has been realigned. And hopefully that message alone can reassure people around the world and hopefully make them see that they can do things themselves without having to have regular manipulation to click their spine back in alignment. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please smash that like button and support our channel. Remember you can subscribe to get our latest updates and we've got loads more information on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.